Hello everyone and welcome to Havsala, which is a investigative puzzle game with a rich story and historical references. And let's just jump right in and try it out. The world is too small for me and the heaven as well. Where then will this my soul find room enough to dwell? Good question. Frine? I see a cute kitty cat. New place, new path. Okay. Do not pray for yourself, says Master Pythagoras. You may know what you want, but you cannot know what you need. As I look back on my life, I see that nothing I have done eagerly has ever turned out badly for me, not even that trial. Maybe I'm not just a woman who gets what she wants, but also one that knows wishing for what's best for herself. I am Freeney, and this is my desire, my will, my story. I have a body that can befuddle men's senses. Why not share it? Isn't it unfair to others keeping myself to myself? But I could not let this beauty be just a shallow shell. It was not enough. I had to fill it with the most precious and supreme knowledge. So I learned. Philosophy, numbers, geometry, musical harmony, arts, cosmos. I learned with the curiosity of a child who experiences the world for the first time. Our discussions at symposiums, which I hosted from time to time, both fed me and made me feel hungry for more. Impressive. I wished to be immortal. I could go on with this life forever, pursue this transaction I have with men as long as my mind and body remained sharp. However, our bodies are doomed to die. Body must die so that the soul can move on to another body and continue to learn and grow. You see? We have a common purpose, the soul and I. I've told you that I know what I need. Now it is time to pass this information on to the next selves. I will bury it in my soul so that it can be with me through all my journeys. Even if my body dies, let my soul not forget what it knows. And maybe if not I really build a dwelling works. place for my soul, it won't be scattered far away. Every number has a meaning, and every meaning has a number. And I have the perfect number for this gig. Beauty comes from harmony. We can sense that in mathematics, geometry, music, and tragedia, even if we are not aware. Tragedia? But awareness enables us to establish I'm that, that is like a, And over time, uh, Greek we see word. that this harmony takes place not only within themselves, but also in the interactions of these fields with each other. When that happens, all the existence comes out as one in our minds. Life becomes more, and we begin to hear it start to sound meaningful. But if we let this journey of finding a meaning keep us from living life to its fullest, the life we search the meaning for slips through our fingers. Very true. The fact that the body is temporary should not make the pleasures we experience with it insignificant. On the contrary, we should cherish every sip that it offers us as if we drink from the ambrosia. In harmony with the cosmos, with ourselves, by letting those around us taste it too. In the year 98.2, these thoughts had already found their niche in my mind and had made me intolerant to those who advocate the virtue of condemning oneself to a long-suffering life. So I did what I do best. I made my own way. I've walked on the line between learning and remembering. This way, it wasn't overwhelming and came naturally. You should go easy on your mind if you want it to transcend many lifetimes. Now, all I had to do was listen to the sound of my soul and live this life as Orpheus played the lyre. But such a peculiar thing that I will not know whether I have succeeded in conveying this place to my later lives. The next me will know. Let my faith be the seed for the generations to come. Mm -hmm. Very interesting and inspirational, especially considering that it must be referencing um, someone that lived in ancient Greece. And I, I love that that's a thing. 
Okay. Bribe for the crow. The others, I'm sure, are locked. Yeah, because there are keyholes on them. Hmm. Interesting. No, that's just that one. Already heard that. This kind of reminds me of uh, the Room games. I, I love those games. I see you there. Lawn Mon. Uh, Polychrome? <laughs> Okay, Albert Racine. Very blurry. Interesting. Solid objects. 16th century geom geometric and perspective drawings by Anonymous. Oh wow, impressive. I mean, I don't know if those are actually ones from, oh, you know, actually from the 16th century. The ancient Greek calendar. Many city-states in ancient Greece used different calendars. Some cities have taken their foundation dates as year zero, and this has caused a power struggle with other cities. They have reset their first year to an earlier date to prove that they are the oldest and the most ancient city-state among the others. To measure the one-month cycle, they observed the face of the moon. The beginning of the crescent phase is considered the first day of the month. And to measure the day the sun is observed. In Greek calendars, the day ends as the sun sets. Many societies have used this lunar calendar compared to the movement of the sun, which can be observed over a long period of time. The phases of the moon were a celestial event that is easier to distinguish uh, for the public. With the development of agriculture, the lunar phase calendar was adapted to the sun. The Olympiad. The Olympiad is the calendar that takes the first a uh, competition called the Olympics as the year zero. This first Olympiad was held in the year 776 BCE according to the Gregorian calendar. It is thought that the Olympics were held before this day too, but it was not referred as Olympics in the records. Each Olympic year lasts four years. The current year is written next to the Olympic year. For example, the second year of the 98th Olympics is written as 98-2 uh, and corresponds to uh, 345 BCE in Gregorian calendar. Okay. Hmm. Rini mentions the year 98-2 in her journal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The ancient Roman calendar. Ab Urbi Condita refers to the calendar system that takes the foundation date of the city of Rome as a starting point. It is known as AUC for short. The AUC calendar does not have a year zero, so there is one year between 1 BCE and 1 CE, not two years. Okay. Uh, Roman numerals are used in the AUC. A date is written on the calendar as follows. Okay. AD 8 ID. Sep. And uh, yeah, that. <laughs> the image on the right is a copy of the image of April from the calendar of the year 354, commissioned by the Roman aristocrat Valentinus. To the engraving artist uh, Thereus Dionysus Philocalus. Geometric landscapes. Lawrence Stoa. 
Interesting. And yes, I know there's a book that is moving. Welcome to the Soul Palace. The roads that lead here are torturous, but leaving is quite easy. Kind of. All a soul has to do to get out of here is to enter the place and date where she or he came from to the map shown on the right and the time module below it. So that soul will return to that time and place and you will be able to witness the next soul. When you complete all the necessary steps, the cover of the map will open, don't worry. As you run through your hand on the books, a pen will appear on the important pages. Use it to take notes and you can find your notes in the books section of your notebook on the bottom right. Let's try touching the page. You will find all the information you need on your notebook. Summary section will write down the path you followed. If you feel lost, uh, feed the crow on the balcony and he will shed light on your next step. Okay. Uh, click, drag, camera scroll, uh, notebook or N. There's also back. Or right click for back. Okay, so click on the wheel or middle mouse button i is inventory escape or p to pause i move the desk for this painting don't overlook it hmm. pythagoras who is pythagoras uh, Pythagoras was from Samos and lived on an island across Mycale uh, during ancient Ionian period. He had established his own philosophy and, and created a community. Women could also join this communion, which was unusual for its time, but this uh, congregation was unusual in many ways already. Pythagoras' disciples regarded his statements as if they were coming from a prophet and quoted his words as ipsi dixit, which means the master said so. Pythagoras was using the word philosophy as love of wisdom, philia tes sophias, and calling himself lover of wisdom, philosophos, uh, instead of wise. This was the first time in history someone referred to himself as philosopher. In addition to being a scientist and a religious leader, Pythagoras was a foreign voice to the ears of Greek and Roman people with his Eastern acculturation. Since his acolytes regard him as a prophet and don't submit to anyone else after his death, Roman state has uh, killed almost everyone who followed him. Thereupon, the congregation has gone underground and continued in secret. In the first century AD, this society re-emerged under the name of Neo-Pythagoreanism. <laughs> what a word. The Pythagorean School. The Pythagorean School was founded in Croton and had marginal teachings compared to its contemporaries. His disciples believed that every living creature is equal and did not eat meat. Their reincarnation belief had a part in this. A cow they ate today could contain the soul of a loved one who died yesterday. In the Pythagorean school, it was thought that it would not be right and fair to give every knowledge to anyone. According to Pythagoras, uh, giving the knowledge that requires high cognitive ability to people with low uh, capacity would do more harm than good. Everyone should be given as much information as they deserve. Some of Pythagoras' lessons were open to everyone, and some were private only to his chosen students. The class was separated from Pythagoras by a curtain, and his students would only listen to Pythagoras' voice. Students who were successful in the listening phase would have advanced to the next level. This group was called Pythagorei, Pythagoras' exclusive disciples, Mathematici. 
Learning to be quiet was the first lesson for every student. What was told in the lesson should not be told to outsiders and kept as a secret. What? Okay, that's interesting. Not sure what that is. Except weird. Uh, the Orphism, Pythagoreanism, and Music. Orphism is the ancient Greek interpretation of the belief in uh, transmigration and reincarnation. It argues that the body is a temporary part of us and the soul is our permanent part that travels between those bodies. It emerged from Orpheus, who is known as the singer, seer, and sorcerer. It is a mystical salvation belief. The Pythagoreans believed that everything could be explained by numbers, by mathematics, including music. Uh, measures and proportions in music could be expressed with numbers. As a matter of fact, it was Pythagoras who revealed the relationship between mathematics and music. He discovered that by shortening the string, the pitch goes higher, and he noticed that taut strings of integer lengths produce harmonic sounds. It is also said that Pythagoras added the eighth string to the lyre. According to the Earth-centered view, there were seven celestial bodies, Earth, Moon, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. There are also seven notes in music. Pythagoras used it to explain why there were seven objects in the sky. This theory is called music of the spheres. Hmm. Interesting. Pythagorean mathematics, according to uh, Pythagoras and Pythagoreans, the basis of everything was numbers. One is absolute. To have a grasp on one is to have a grasp on the nature of all things. One is the generator of odd and even numbers. One is a point, two is a line, three is a triangle, four is a tetrahedron. Uh, each number has a different meaning. Odd numbers are called male, even numbers are called female. Pythagoras' theorem was the main idea in the formation of number theory and thereafter trigonometry. It also forms the basis of analytical geometry. Interesting. Pythagorean triangle! Yes! In the Pythagorean triangle, the sum of the squares of the right side in a right angled triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. The simplest Pythagorean triangle is the 345 triangle. However, Pythagoras' student Hippasus discovered an isosceles triangle with side lengths of 1.1 and the square root of 2. When he tried to calculate the value of the square root of 2, he realized that it cannot be expressed in integers. Thus, he discovered the existence of irrational numbers. This discovery was a threat to Pythagoras and his world of perfect numbers. Believing in the connections between integers and objects, the Pythagoreans denied the existence of irrational numbers and silenced Hippasus. I am not going to read everything. Okay, memory discipline? Interesting. Oh. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Colors of the books were a little bit suspicious. Okay. <laughs> I guess I solved that without actually knowing what I was doing. I guess that's good.
Are there rhymes and hieroglyphs? I don't know. Don't be proud of your knowledge. Limits of art are not reached. No artist's skills are perfect. Okay. If you say so. Oh. Civilly? Well, I don't have anything to put in there. There are triangles. Hi, kitty cat. Oh, I want one like that. For sure. Oh. Oh. A piece from an amphora. Amphora? Whatever. That. There we go. Some more bribes. Huh. Not sure what I'm going for there. Medieval artists' minds are quite strange. <laughs> yeah. Quite strange indeed. This liar is staring at me. Where's the eighth? Okay. Huh. Oh, I wonder what that is for. Is it for this one? Okay, I don't know what I'm trying, what I would be trying to get to there. Not a clue. Tentacles. Interesting. Eh, Pythagoras. I don't know the date yet. No. no I don't have anything to place in that. Don't have anything to place there either. Huh. An empty book. Hmm? No. A wand? And some more bribes. An old oil lamp. Even its smell is old. <laughs> Okay. I feel like I might have to go to the crow, honestly. Such a beautiful night. Mm. Hello, crow. Trick or treat, or a little hint. Hmm. When I examined the Pythagoras book in the library, I saw the symbols from the glass-lidded showcase. Okay. Uh, on the Pythagorean triangle drawing. I checked the size of the edge on which the symbol stands, and I dragged the box with that symbol to that number in the showcase. Okay.
What are you talking about? represents the point becoming one. When two points are next to each other, a line is formed. The number two represents dual structures opposites. The number three forms a triangle that is a plane which represents triple structures such as mother, father, child, father, son, holy spirit, soul, body, mind. The number four represents a tetrahedron. A four-sided shape forms a field and represents the four forces of nature, the four seasons, the four directions, the four elements. The sum of the points forming this triangle is equal to the number 10, and 10 is the number representing God, enlightened man for Pythagoras and Pythagoreans. Okay. Nice. Still don't really get it. I mean, those... Those were there? I really don't know. I don't get it. This is an oddly empty scene. Yeah. Oh. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Very confusing. Honestly, I think I'm going to stop here. But yeah, I will probably try to figure this out more on my own. But yeah, right now I have absolutely no idea. I feel, feel stupid, honestly. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.